I have definitely been in my share of immature relationships, but I've also learned a lot. So today we're going to discuss seven signs that you may be in an immature relationship. My name is Romani Malco. I am the founder of the PEP, the People's Empowerment Platform, and you are watching another episode of Advice from a Jackass. I've made all the mistakes for you, and this channel allows me to share insights gained from those mistakes in hopes that it might make your life better. I'm not a guru. You ain't got to buy nothing, but I would appreciate it if you'd hit the subscribe button. All right, let's get started. Now, for some of us, when we look back at our relationships in high school or college and observe the way that we behaved, we say, okay, I chalked that up to a learning experience. I didn't know better. And from those early relationships, we gain a better sense of who we are, what we need, and new healthy communication skills that we can take forward into our adult relationships. But what happens when someone doesn't learn from those experiences and gets stuck in old patterns of unhelpful behavior? Sometimes our personal issues are so deeply embedded that we find ourselves stalling the maturation of potentially good relationships relationships. If you're thinking to yourself, damn, that kind of sounds like me, or that this might be a situation that you're in, here are seven signs of an immature relationship and signs that you may have outgrown it. Oh, but wait, first I got to congratulate Kashia because you are the winner of last week's $50 Amazon gift card giveaway. Again, Kashia, congratulations. Your answer was spot on and thank you very much for the words of encouragement. And please stick around to the end of the video to find out how you too can win a $50 Amazon gift card. Now let's get back on track. Number one, a sign that you may be in an immature relationship is if you or your partner struggle to talk about your feelings. Emotions serve as critical information that we can use to set boundaries and make decisions. This is something that scholars refer to as emotional fluency and being emotionally fluent has been linked to successful long-term relationships. Now there are a lot of reasons as to why a person might lack emotional fluency. Ron Huxley, family therapist and the author of the book Love and Limits says that if you grew up in a household where your parents didn't have emotional fluency or if we grew up in environments where adults couldn't constructively or respectfully communicate their own emotions, what will happen to us as we become adults is we will express our emotions through dysfunctional behavior. Another possibility is that the immature partner may struggle with vulnerability or is just extremely guarded in the expression of their feelings. A person like that will pretend to play it cool, act like they're unhurt by that ignored text or by that forgotten special occasion. Sex and relationship expert Dr. Esther Perel says that these kinds of things can deny a relationship of true closeness and connection. So if you consistently find yourself ready to communicate your emotions in a constructive way and yet your partner either avoids the conversation, shakes it off, keeps himself too busy or would rather communicate through tantrums and yelling, there's a possibility that you may be in different levels of maturity in that relationship and that you could possibly be outgrowing that relationship. I think this is a little misleading because how you communicate your feelings is also very important. Sarcasm, talking down, pointing the finger, being defensive, or just expecting someone to get it because you've thrown a tantrum isn't emotional fluency. One of the best things the therapist ever taught me about dealing with conflicts within a relationship is to always start with how you feel. For instance, rather than saying you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that, you could start with, this makes me feel this way. Sometimes I feel this way. And by doing so, you allow yourself to be vulnerable, but you also allow yourself to get to the core of the matter much quicker. Number two, another sign that you may be in an immature relationship is if your partner pulls away during times of stress. As you and your partner's relationship becomes more intertwined, you'll begin to know the sources of stress in each other's lives. This could include uh, stress related to work. It could include tasks that they have around the home or maybe other people that they have to take care of in their lives. The immature partner might see your stress as a threat to their own energy or personal resources, which can lead them to pull away, maybe by avoiding or dismissing your feelings or requests for support in that time as they may deem it to be too much to deal with. According to John Coleman, co-author of the book Passion and Purpose, this is usually symptomatic of thinking of a relationship in terms of I. What can I get from this relationship? The mature partner moves towards the idea of managing stress together as a team, which helps you to become closer, which also helps you to develop more trust and coping capabilities. So if you find yourself in this pattern of always feeling alone during times of stress, your partner's nowhere to be found, or maybe they make you feel guilty guilty for being stressed, they may not be mature enough to think of the relationship in terms of we rather than I. I was once in a relationship with a woman who every time she got stressed, she made everyone else the enemy. Everyone around her became the enemy and that was really tough to deal with. Number three is rampant jealousy. We all know what it feels like to be a little jealous in our relationships. And to an extent, it's reasonable to want to guard over the people that we love. However, when a person feels the need to spy over your text messages or gets upset whenever we spend time with friends, this could be signs of serious 
serious immaturity. Psychologists agree that there can be a range of contributing factors to jealousy in a relationship. Sometimes jealousy is a sign of distrust, so maybe it stems from you witnessing infidelity in your parents' relationship, or maybe you yourself were cheated on. Check this out. One study in the Journal of Couple and Relationship Therapy found that if your father committed infidelity, odds are that your romantic relationships will be characterized by significantly lower levels of trust, justice, and loyalty than if your father hadn't committed infidelity. Okay, well, my trust issues explained. Another thing that might contribute to jealousy in an immature partner is codependence. This is when one partner displays an excessive emotional or psychological reliance on the other partner. So in that type of situation, a codependent partner might grow jealous or maybe even feel threatened by seeing their primary source of support give attention to someone else. Alternatively, one study of 250 marriages in the Journal of Social and Personal Relationships found that jealousy can stem from problems with low self-esteem. Now, what I'm about to say is not research-based, it's just from personal experience. As I've gotten more mature and learned how to set boundaries, I tend to gravitate to the relationships that help build up my self-confidence and sense of self-worth. Jealous reactions are normal, but they should evolve into healthy discussions about boundaries and what two people feel to be the line between acceptable and unacceptable behavior. If your partner is resistant or reacts badly to this type of communication, it may be a sign that they're not mature enough to unpack the deeper underlying issues that bring about their jealousy. I once dated a woman who I thought I was going to marry and have children with. But being a recognizable actor and constantly being doted on by fans made her livid. As I got to understand the trauma of her past, I began to understand how all of the above, as well as growing up in environments where you were violated by the people that you trust, I could see how that contributed to the dynamics of our relationship. But again, being able to communicate or negotiate boundaries is a sign of maturity and often a key essential of any healthy relationship. I have definitely fallen short in that area. Number four, if your partner behaves spitefully, when the immature partner feels hurt, rather than communicate how your behavior made them feel, they may try to retaliate and hurt you as much as you hurt them. I've been there, I've even been guilty of it, and I can tell you now it is not characteristic of a mature relationship relationship. In fact, I'm going to go a step further and say it may be a sign that your partner craves power and control in your relationship more so than a loving connection. And I say that because spiteful behavior has been linked with the darker side of human personality, such as narcissism, Machiavellianism. So you got to keep on your guard if this type of behavior consistently shows up in your relationship. In contrast, the mature relationship is characterized by a trust that both partners are behaving in ways that takes the other partner's feelings into consideration. And then when either partner makes a mistake, which will happen because human beings make mistakes, a mature, respectful conversation should be on the table. This sounds like common sense, but more often than not, people are led by their emotions. But if your partner is always in the mode of seeking out revenge, there may be deeper, darker underlying issues that need to be addressed. Number five, another sign that you may be in an immature relationship is if the two of you haven't sat down and discussed your future. Sustainable relationships require that both partners invest emotionally in the possibilities of a long-term future together. Samantha Samantha Burns, couples counselor and author of Done With Dating, Seven Steps to Finding Your Person, says that an emotionally immature partner does not think ahead and likely does not plan a future with you, but rather lives in the moment. And if they do see a future with you, they probably have a difficult time articulating and communicating this to you. Yet, all of this may be a sign that you're dealing with a partner who has commitment issues. When diagnosing commitment issues in a relationship, psychologists often refer to a framework known as attachment theory. Attachment theory argues that whether or not we bond and how we bond with our primary primary caregivers affects our confidence and our behaviors in our adult relationships. Those who experience secure attachments from an early age will be more capable of trust and therefore more willing to discuss plans for a future with you. However, early childhood experiences such as abuse, the death of or the walking out of a parent living nomadic lifestyles that made it really difficult to establish long-term bonds may result in a person having an insecure attachment style. Depending on the nature of the dysfunctional attachment style, it may result in avoidance or just emotional discomfort with commitment. So if you find yourself at that point in your relationship of wanting to discuss plans for the future, but your partner's not willing to commit to anything further than a weekend away, chances are your partner may be suffering from an insecure attachment style, which could be stalling the maturity of your relationship. Speaking of relationships, what about our relationship? Is it enticing enough to get you to hit the subscribe button and the like button? If so, please let me know by typing done in the comment section.
thank you in advance. Number six, a partner who does not like to be held accountable is a major sign of immaturity. We all mess up in relationships. We all inadvertently hurt our partners. Being able to admit when you make mistakes and apologize is not only a key sign of maturity in relationships, but just a key sign of maturity in general. On the topic of apologies, a mature apology starts with, I apologize or I am sorry and ends with, what can I do to make it better? The optimum outcome of an apology should be a change in behavior, even if it's just to be more mindful of making that mistake again. But the unwillingness to be held accountable for our actions or apologize could be indicative of a need to maintain control. Some people were just raised to believe that a relationship is about dominating their partner. The immature person usually finds more value in protecting their ego than finding mutual ground. And as we know, it does very little for the relationship. If anything, it hurts their relationship. If you consistently find that you are the only one apologizing in your relationship, it may be a sign that your partner is not mature enough to step up and let his ego take the back seat. Number seven, another sign of an immature relationship is if your conflicts are consistently unproductive. When our emotions run hot, there is a temptation to bring a win-lose mentality to the conflicts that crop up in our relationships. However, those in successful long-term relationships know more often than not, arguments are a result of miscommunications, maybe even differences in point of view and are rarely intentions to hurt the other person. Same as with our approach to attachment, how we handle conflict is often dictated by what we experience in our childhood and early years through our parents and close family. Likewise, we know from research that whether the climate within our families growing up encouraged uniformity of opinions or open, respectful expression of disagreements will feed into our mentalities and conflict style as adults. I didn't have reproductive role models for conflict in my earlier years, so a lot of times when I encountered conflict, it resulted in arguing. I was a yeller and I would want to bring that win-lose mentality into every conflict. I'd be bringing up stuff that had nothing to do with the current situation. And the price that I paid was that I missed out on the opportunity to better understand my partner's point of view. If you consistently find that your conflicts and disagreements can't be resolved with a simple conversation, it's a sign of an immature relationship. And if you are the only one willing to have those types of conversations, you may have outgrown that relationship. We all have different starting points in relationships, but at some point you want to believe that your partner is matching your pace, especially where it comes to communication. They don't have to be making the same money as you. They don't have to have the same drive as you. They don't have to share the same perspective as you. But when it comes to conflict resolution, It is key that you are both willing to sit down and talk it out and better understand one another's perspectives. One of the most effective things we can do for this is work on communicating our expectations, our emotions, and our desires. One study in the Journal of Sex and Marital Therapy found that poor communication was the second most cited reason for divorce after lack of love and intimacy. Clearly, this is an area that we can all work on. Don't worry about me. Our partners can't read our minds and what we think we may have communicated effectively may not have been communicated at all. Always try setting the example for your partner by modeling the kind of communication that you would like from them. And with social media and all our phones and everything, it's difficult, but we have got to ensure our partners that we are fully present, especially in times of conflict, and we are open to hearing their perspectives and understanding how they feel. Also, it is important to acknowledge when things go right in your communication. This could simply be in telling your partner that you appreciate their helpful communication or just taking pride in one another's accomplishments or just openly expressing when you feel connected. Also, we all got to work on having productive discipline disagreements. I know sometimes things can get hot in disagreements and our brains can kick into that automatic fight or flight response as if we're in real danger. And sometimes that takes the argument way beyond what's warranted. A way to counteract the fight or flight response is to take a really deep breath. Then try to approach your partner's position in what expert in conflict resolution Megan Price calls the curious mindset. And not that sarcastic curious mindset. Genuinely a curious mindset. Ask smarter, more genuine questions and become curious in your partner's point of view. Try to consider what might be at stake for them or what might be their perceived threat in a disagreement. Ask how certain behaviors make them feel. Really try to pinpoint where the miscommunication may have taken place, maybe by having your partner recount their version of events. I am telling you from experience, do not blame, do not raise your voice. It's better just be like, you know what? I felt like this when you did that. And I know it's a vulnerable position to be in, but truthfully speaking, it is the only time that me and my lady really make progress in our conflict is when we allow ourselves to speak from how we feel rather than what we think the other person did. And if your relationship seems to be past the point of being able to achieve those tips, you could consider couples therapy. I've done it. Couples therapy is actually pretty dope. It sometimes gives you perspectives and insights to one another's pain points that you may not have considered. And even if the couples therapy doesn't necessarily save your relationship, it definitely will make you better for the next one. Oh, don't forget to hit the like button.
like and subscribe button. And if you'd like to qualify to win a $50 Amazon gift card, please let me know in the comments which of these seven signs you personally identify with. My name is Romney Malco. I am the founder of the PEP, the People's Empowerment Platform. And this concludes another episode of Advice from a Jackass.